right, so we will be talking about the nitrogen cycle today, which obviously plays an important role in the farming community, okay? So nitrogen, as you can see right there, is very important. It is atomic number seven on the periodic table. You will be talking about this lots in your chemistry class next year. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> so all organisms must have nitrogen, specifically the atom of nitrogen, in order to build proteins and nucleic acids. Proteins make up what? Your muscles and your hair and all sorts of things, right? Nucleic acids, what's a nucleic acid? Give me an example of one. Starts with a D. N-A. Oh my God, you guys DNA. are really worrying me. I'm just going to hope this is first period tiredness. DNA is a nucleic acid. Okay, RNA is another nucleic acid. Are DNA and RNA important for life? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so obviously here are proteins. There's a Thanksgiving protein for you right up, right up top. Nitrogen gas makes up about 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. You are currently inhaling nitrogen as we speak. Okay. It would appear that nitrogen is readily available for use in manufacturing proteins and amino acids. However, do you think we can just suck nitrogen out of the air and use it? No, no that would be too easy, right? So most organisms do not have the ability to make use of atmospheric nitrogen. Atmospheric nitrogen, for those of you who like sciencey stuff, is actually N2. Oh, you can't even, here, let me write it up here. N2, okay. You'll be learning more about that next year, but that's what it looks like when it's in the atmosphere. So nitrogen is also found in ammonia, the bodies of dead plants and animals and in the wastes of both urine and feces of living organisms. So nitrogen's kind of grody, right? A little bit. So the nitrogen cycle is possible only, we only are able to recycle all of this nitrogen from the atmosphere into plants, from dead things back into the atmosphere, etc., because of the soil dwelling bacteria. We are dependent upon these bacteria for nitrogen and for life, which is kind of crazy. Okay, they live in the roots and stuff of plants. And each type of bacteria plays a particular role in the recycling of nitrogen. So nitrogen fixation. A special group of soil dwelling bacteria known as the nitrogen fixing bacteria. Do you think you need to know what those are? Yeah. Yes, you might want to put a little star next to that. Nitrogen fixing bacteria are able to transform atmospheric nitrogen into a form that other living cells can use. So that being said, these bacteria take nitrogen from the air and convert it into nitrates, which we call NO3. Take nitrogen from the air and convert it into nitrates. So nitrogen fixation is the process of converting nitrogen gas to nitrates. 
So nitrogen fixation is nitrogen gas to nitrates. All right, so the nitrates are absorbed by the roots of plants, and the plants use the nitrates to build proteins and nucleic acids. Since I know that's hard to read from the back of the class, proteins and nucleic acids. Then once the plants have that usable form, we eat the plants and we can use their usable form to build our own protein and nucleic acids and things like that. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So last but not least, we say nitrogen is passed up the food chain. Nitrogen is passed up the food chain, much like energy is passed up the food chain, right? So the nitrogen cycle is a complex cycle with five important processes. The first one being nitrogen fixation or the process of converting atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia and nitrates. There we go. So we can see at the bottom of our little graph thing, what is this thing called? Uh, figure, thank you. <laughs> Atmospheric nitrogen be, uh, goes to the nitrogen fixing bacteria and it's able to take that N2 molecule and break it down and turn it into ammonia and into nitrates. For those of you who are interested, that means it goes from N2 to NH4 to NO2. So you can see from that, right, it's adding some things, it's changing the molecular structure and making it usable by other living things. Second step, ammonification. Ammonification. I know, it sounds weird. Okay, many animals excrete and eliminate nitrogen in their urine and feces. We are included in this as well as humans. Okay, so soil bacteria convert these waste products into ammonia back into NH3 or NH4, depending on the state. That's more chemistry lesson than you will need later. Okay, in addition, these bacteria convert the nitrogen compounds in dead plants and animals to ammonia. Ammonia is then usable by plants to make proteins and nucleic acids. Then we eat the plants, and now you have the circle of life, right? So we can see in our figure that um, that's what we just said. I thought there was one more. Guess not. Okay. So we have excretion. Decomposition decomposes bacteria and decomposition all occur. Some of this ammonia, like I said, is absorbed by the plants to make proteins and nucleic acids. And ammonification specifically is the production of ammonia by bacteria during the decay of nitrogen containing organic matter. That is not an exact definition that you need to know. You just need to realize that it's taking waste products and turning it into ammonia that is usable by plants. 
All right, nitrification. Some of the ammonia in the soil is converted by several kinds of bacteria into nitrates. And these nitrates are absorbed from the soil by plants in a process called nitrification, the production of nitrates from ammonia. So denitrification is when another kind of bacteria acts on the remaining nitrate, converting it back to nitrogen gas. So that's what completes our cycle. Okay? Denitrification is taking the nitrates and turning it back into atmospheric nitrogen. So essentially it's the conversion of nitrate to nitrogen gas. You guys ready? Okay, last step, assimilation. Ammonia and nitrates are picked up by plants. And the plants use ammonia and nitrates to build proteins and nucleic acids. Which brings us back to the plant protein at the top. So when animals eat the plants, they use the nitrogen to build their own proteins and nucleic acids. Okay. So really we're just saying this is when nitrogen is incorporated into plant and animal compounds. So eaten by animals, animal protein, the last two parts of that cycle. All right, so the nitrogen cycle requires four types of bacteria. What is the role of each of the following groups of bacteria? Okay, so first we had the nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They are able to take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into ammonia. So if I were you, I would just write this part. Take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it to ammonia. Then we talked about the ammonia, ammoniafying bacteria, and these break down dead organic matter and convert it to ammonia. Then we talked about nitrifying bacteria, which convert ammonia to nitrates. And nitrates are really the good stuff. Then denitrifying bacteria consume the nitrates and release elemental nitrogen back into the atmosphere. So I'll kind of underline the more important parts for you if that helps. So if you turn your lecture notes over, you will see the EM assignment for the nitrogen cycle. Note, this EM assignment is a little bit different, okay? You have to turn your paper into thirds, like this, but it's weird thirds, okay? So on the right-hand side in your EM, you're going to divide your paper like it is up here. So you have the top one-third where you're going to draw figure three, I think dash 14, but I can't remember. It says in your directions on your page. You're going to draw it up there, and then you're going to divide the bottom in half, like that. Okay? And then it gives you the assignment for each third of the paper on the back of your lecture notes that you have right now. All right? So you have the rest of this period 
to work on this. Whatever you do not finish will be homework. And we are going to have a quiz tomorrow, a short quiz, five to ten question quiz at the beginning of class tomorrow over the water, carbon, and nitrogen cycle. Who's excited? Me. All right. Yes, so there you go. You guys can get to work.